Hey guys, it's Zach here and welcome back to TechZR. So before we get started, I would like to tell you that I will be posting new videos every Thursday, Friday or Saturday, either on one or both of those days. Okay, so let's begin. For those of you who haven't heard of the Raspberry Pi or the Raspberry Pi Zero in particular, the Raspberry Pi is a series of small single board computers developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation which is based in the UK. And their goal is to promote the teaching of basic computer science in schools and in developing countries. Okay, so let's quickly go through the unboxing so that we can be on our way to setting up the Pi Zero. So what you will need for the setup is an SD card. It is important that you choose an SD card from a trusted brand. Don't go ordering a generic one from China and expect to have a smooth installation. Here I have a Kingston 8GB micro SD card that I picked up from a local computer shop. Next you will have to order the Pi Zero online. You can order the Pi Zero by itself or with a kit. I suggest ordering the kit because it has everything you need to set up the Pi. I got mine from Pemeroni, but you can buy yours anywhere. Okay so I ordered the kit that came with the adapters and the mail pin headers for the GPIO pins. In the packaging, I have a micro USB adapter, HDMI adapter, and the 40 pin connectors. I also got a receipt from Pimeroni. As you can see, I only paid 12.17 pounds, which is about $21 Canadian. And finally, we have the Pi Zero, which is encased in, in an anti static bag for extra protection. Okay, so the Pi Zero has two micro USB ports one for the power supply, and one for your mouse and keyboard. And on the left side, there is a micro HDMI port. Also on the left, we have the micro SD slot where our operating system is going to run. On the other side, we have the 40 GPIO headers. This is where all the hardware is going to be controlled. Okay, so now we're done the unboxing. Let's go and set up all the hardware first before jumping into the software. So first, carefully connect the HDMI adapter to the micro HDMI port. Then connect the micro USB adapter to the micro USB port. Be sure you don't connect it to the power port. Connect it to the port that is closest to the HDMI port. As for the header pins, we are not going to be playing around with that just yet because right now all we're doing is just setting it up. But that will be in another future video so be sure to follow my social media accounts so that you will be notified when that video will be coming out or any other new videos. Okay so let's go ahead and open the SD card so that we can install the OS. Be gentle with the, this SD card because it is very tiny and you can easily lose it. Once you've opened it, place it in the adapter and put it in your computer. Okay guys, this is a screen capture of my desktop and I'm going to be showing you the step-by-step -step process of installing the operating system onto the micro SD card. So in your browser, type in Raspberry Pi and go to raspberrypi.org. There, go to the download section. Here will be two options, Noob or Raspbian. I personally installed Raspbian on my SD card, so we'll go with that. So you'll have to pick between two images. So go and download the zip file for the Raspbian Jesse with Pixel. This is a one and a half gig download, so this might take a while. Once he has finished downloading, right click the zip file and extract it. Now this part will take a long time to extract, so while waiting, download the Win32 disk imager. Now even after we downloaded this, you will still have to wait quite a long time for the extracted files. So I'm going to fast forward the whole process. Okay, so once the extraction is finished, open Win32 disk imager and select the image file we have just downloaded. Then select the device you want to write data on. Be sure to select the micro SD card, then click write. I already finished that process, so I'm just going to exit the application. Now comes the exciting part of booting it to the Pi Zero. But before you do anything, make sure you safely remove the SD card from your computer. So now, remove the micro SD card from the adapter and put it in the micro SD slot in the Pi Zero. Make sure that the pins of the micro SD card are facing the bottom side of the Pi. Now instead of using just a plain old monitor for this setup, I went ahead and used my DIY LCD laptop monitor that I made from a used laptop that was no longer working, which I have a video on that you can check out after this video. But if you don't have one, you can simply just hook up your HDMI cable to your TV or monitor. Okay, so after checking if the monitor was working, I went ahead and powered up the Pi Zero using my phone charger, which supplies 5 volts and 1 amp. The ideal power supply for the Pi Zero is 5 volts and 2.5 amps. But in this case, it's fine because all we're doing is just booting up the system and exploring the OS. But after this, I do recommend getting the right power supply for the Pi Zero. So now is the most exciting part of the setup, the booting process. All we have to do now is plug in the power supply and wait for the Pi to boot the OS. So if your Pi is booting properly, pause this video and just watch the boot process. Or you can just keep playing the video because I'm still showing the booting process anyways. So if everything goes to plan, you should end up with a screen that looks similar to this. So congrats, you've successfully set up your Pi Zero. To start you guys off with navigating through Raspbian, click on the Raspberry Pi icon on the top left side of the screen. 
There you will see more programs you can explore. If you click the programming directory, you will see a whole list of programming languages like Java and Python 2 and Python 3. I don't really know why Py2 is there since it is no longer supported and it will soon retire in 2020. But anyways, you can also go to the task manager to see all the processes and programs that are running. And surprisingly, it has Minecraft in it, but it's pretty glitchy and slow. It's probably because of the power supply or the computer is just slow in general. You can also go to the office directory and you can create Word documents, spreadsheets, and many more stuff. The loading time is slow which really makes you appreciate your Windows PC. But that's what you would expect from a computer that runs on a 1GHz CPU and half a gig of RAM. Overall, this board is excellent for projects that need small computing power and requires a small amount of space. But if you need something a bit more powerful, the Pi 3 Model B is there. I will be doing more videos and tutorials relating to the Pi Zero and also show you guys cool projects that I will be making in the coming weeks. Well, I hope this video helped you guys. For you guys who haven't yet subscribed, please go down below and click that subscribe button for more how-to videos like this one. If you guys want to check out my LCD monitor project, click on this box over here. And if you guys want to check out my Logitech keyboard unboxing that will go really well with the Pi Zero, click on the box over here. Well, thanks for watching this video guys and I'll see you guys on the next one.